Welcome in to Eastlands, everybody. We're Sarah and Tony, and we're about to embark on an adventure around Iceland's Ring Road. This trip promises to be packed with jaw-dropping scenery, unforgettable experiences, and yes, those famous Icelandic hot dogs. We're talking 900 miles of pure, unfiltered, Viking-esque adventure. Now we're gonna do our usual thing and try and keep our budget relatively reasonable. Fairdrop sent us an incredible deal to Iceland, round trip, non-stop on Delta Airlines. So buckle up for this two-part series because we're chasing waterfalls, searching for puffins, and trying our best not to mispronounce every Icelandic word along the way. Gvernufossi. Gvernufoss. Before we get into this video, we are so excited to share that Fairdrop is currently having a huge summer sale where you can get Fairdrop Pro for 50% off, plus a whole bunch of other stuff, and we'll get into that later. Iceland's landscapes have a diversity that is unique from anywhere else in the world. And as first timers in this beautiful land, we plan on exploring as much as we can with the time that we have. First steps in Iceland. Before we dive into this epic journey around Iceland, there's one crucial thing we need, our trusty van. Now, some of you might be wondering, what does van life have to do with Fairdrop? Well, the answer is simple. Fairdrop is just the secret weapon for snagging the best flight deals to get us wherever you wanna go. That's it. The rest is up to you. The journey is whatever you want to make of it, with the idea that you'll have more money to spend on the adventures. And when it comes to exploring Iceland, what better way than by a road trip? In the first part of this series, we are making our way from the western and southern parts of Iceland all the way to the east. First order of business is to get some food. And for our first meal in Iceland, we wanted to do something classy. Hi. Hello. We do four hot dogs. Okay, I'll, everything. Everything, yeah. So I overheard a tour guide say that this place has not moved since 1937. It's like a little shack, but the hot dogs are beloved here, apparently. So we each got two hot dogs. She said she recommended it with everything on it. I don't know what everything is. I think there's some onions, ketchup, mustard. No idea what that is. Not sure find out. We're good. To be completely honest, at first we didn't exactly get the hype. We both thought the hot dogs were good, but that's it. But we also tried the hot dogs at Pilsavagenen, and I might have to start a debate by saying this, but we think their hot dogs were way better. Anyway, I'm sure we'll get plenty of opinions on that, but we need groceries. And for that, we went to this place that is supposed to have the cheapest groceries around. It's called Bonus Inn. You'll know it when you see it. We kept our shopping pretty simple with the hopes of eating out less. But naturally, we got more snacks than food. Ramen. Chocolate. Porridge. Pringles, the essentials. Peanut butter. And jelly. Paper towels. Fuel. Groceries cost 7,184 krona, I think, which is like 52 US dollars. But I forgot we have not given you guys a van tour yet. Here it is. We aren't gonna spend much time in Reykjavik because we wanna have enough daylight to make it to our first waterfall. Granted, there's plenty of daylight to spare here, but our plan is to have more time to explore Reykjavik on the back end of this road trip. They say you either start here or you end here. We kind of chose both. Well, here is the first of probably many waterfalls on this ring road road trip. This is the name. It's a text on the screen, but it's really cool because you drive for like an hour and a half outside of Reykjavik and this is kind of the first big like whoa thing that you see. Quite a lot of people here, I think this is a very popular tour bus spot, but there's plenty of room to spread out, so don't let the crowds deter you. Now, most of the waterfalls in Iceland are unique, but what makes this waterfall unique in its own right is that the basin forms a bit of a bowl at the bottom that you can walk around, and you can go behind the falls if you don't mind getting wet. There's just something about the scenery here that makes you feel small. I don't know if it's because of the towering waterfalls or long stretches of road where you don't see anyone else for hours, but Iceland certainly feels like another world. 
after the waterfall, we started to look for a campsite for the night, which led us to the town of Vic and our first black sand beach. We're probably gonna hang out here for a little bit, but the cool thing about Iceland, depending on who you ask, is that it's like nine o'clock PM right now. And you would have no idea it's 9 p.m. Like it looks like it might be like three maybe. And you really can't beat a beach that is surrounded by beautiful mountains like this. So the reason we came to this beach is because it's supposed to be the first spot where we could see puffins. Unfortunately, we didn't get to see any. But Vic should be a great place for us to camp with a backdrop like this. I am speaking a little low because it's four in the morning, but you probably wouldn't know that without a clock because it looks exactly the same as when we went to sleep, but it's crazy. You can hear the birds chirping. They are pretty loud. They weren't too distracting when we slept, but let me catch you up on how things are. So we spent our first night here in Iceland. We slept in Vic. We got a van this time with a power hookup and a heater, but um, the campsite we we're at is completely full and all the power hookups were gone. So once again, we spent our first night without heat. The other campsite we wanted to go to was at a waterfall, but that was equally, if not more crowded. But we are gonna backtrack to that waterfall this morning before we continue on our road trip. waterfall is massive. Holy <laughs> You can really feel the power of this waterfall. It is crazy. So plenty of people take advantage of the daylight in the nighttime here with Midnight Sun. I highly encourage you to also take care of the early morning hours because we are here at one of the most iconic waterfalls in all of Iceland with it entirely to ourselves because we got here at around 5.30 a.m. Most of the people are hanging out at the bottom of the waterfall, but if you fancy yourself a little adventure and maybe a little exercise, there's these stairs that lead to the top. Now, after Tiger Cave Temple in Thailand, stairs on the side of a mountain seem pretty trivial. Breathing is heavy. Oh God, just a few more, right? And I'm not having fun. I will say I have seen Instagram like videos of peak hours and this staircase is just filled. Underestimate this climb a little bit. It's not hard, but I am starting to breathe a little heavier. It is wet, but they do have railings so you can hold on as you climb to the top. Whew. Made it. The view is incredible. Mm. Actually, on second thought, it's a little scary. <laughs> oh. going to, I hesitate to call it a hidden gem, but I do know it is a far less visited waterfall than the one we were just at. And it is called Gvernufossi. Gvernufoss. You do have to pay for parking. It was 750 krona, which is like five bucks USD. And it's supposed to be like a mile and a half, I think, with minimal elevation. 
Odin. Sarah and I woke up pretty early to get to the waterfall, so we hadn't had much food yet. To fix that, we headed back down to Vic because the coffee shop next to where we camped looked really cool. We just got breakfast at a place called School Beans. It's right next to where our campsite was. It's this really quaint little coffee shop inside of an old school bus. We got a couple of coffees and two bagels with Icelandic cream cheese, which were actually pretty good. This is a, another Black Sand Beach right here in Vic. This one does tend to get a little bit more congested with crowds because it has these really cool rock columns that you can climb up and get your photo at. So worth visiting both. I'm sure time of day also matters. It is like the middle of the day right now. So of course there's a lot of people. This is also a Game of Thrones filming location, which I feel like probably all of Iceland is. So Iceland is one of those places that we knew we wouldn't be able to stick to our typical budget travel hacks. We knew it was gonna be expensive, we kind of have an idea of what to expect. There are definitely ways that you can kind of cut costs, which we're gonna do a little bit of, but one of the most expensive things, actually the most expensive thing, is this van rental. This van rental we have for six nights, pretty much seven full days because of the way our flights worked out. It is $969 total. So that's the van, insurance, an extra driver, I'd, I added both of us as drivers. I think the other really big cost this trip is going to be gas. I've heard that gas is quite pricey in Iceland, so we'll see. It's easy to see why a lot of people take two full weeks to road trip around Iceland. There are so many off-roads and volcanic mountains and cool geological features that you can stop at that you kind of lose track of time. We have a couple pit stops before the main thing we're doing today, which is exploring a glacier, but can you tell what this one is? Can you see it? Can you see it? This is really cool. You can see his little head and little body. Okay, this is our last brief pit stop, I promise. But I'm always going to make time for something Star Wars related. Just here to remind you that the ultimate travel tool for finding incredible flight deals fair drop is currently 50% off. Not only does the sale give you unlimited flight deals for a fraction of the cost, but fair drop is also including a free travel bundle, which includes five packets of AG1, two luggage tags, and a sticker pack. Now I'm sure you're saying, wow, Sarah, that is an incredible deal, but it gets even better because you will also be entered into a giveaway for five nights at an all-inclusive adults-only resort in Punta Cana, Dominican Republic, plus $2,000 to cover flights and expenses. Now, if I were a betting woman, I would say that I see a lot more travel in your future. So scan the QR code or head to the link in the description to take advantage of this incredible summer sale, get your free travel bundle, and then of course get entered to win a free trip to the Dominican Republic. All right, let's get back to the ring road. I lied. One more stop. I mean, it's sheep. Okay, let's see if we can still make it to our glacier tour without any more distractions. We are at one of Iceland's national parks. These icebergs, glaciers, icebergs. Icebergs just popped out of the water out of nowhere while we were driving by, and it looks so unreal. It looks so unreal, it looks fake. This is incredible. And we're gonna go on an amphibious boat tour around these icebergs and uh, get a closer look. And this for you. Thank you. Last but not least. <laughs> so this is essentially like a duck boat, if you've ever seen one of those. Basically, it's a land vehicle that can turn into a boat or vice versa. But this thing is gonna take us around the glacier for a little bit. Yeah, I don't know. 
Mm. You want the small one? No, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> On the tour, they break off a piece of ice for everyone to try, but we had some second thoughts. Is that the one everyone is touching? It looks fake. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> Piece of the iceberg just broke off. I missed it on my camera, but you can still see the iceberg kind of floating around. way comparatively to see the glaciers it was really cool and it was only 35 minutes it was the cheapest option for getting out on the water they have more like up close and personal and kayaking adventures as well both of our tickets were like 95 ish dollars i think together so some fun facts they gave us on the boat that you won't be able to hear because the audio is windy one this used to be a glacier and it's only 95 years old, which seems really young. Now it's a lagoon and it's one of the only ones here that mix into the ocean. So it's got salt water and fresh water. What that also means is that they have seals. So there's like 200 seals that live here. There weren't any out there. Actually, I did see one, but the kids threw a rock at it and scared it away. I didn't know that. Uh, I need my other lens. There's a seal out there though. Somewhere he just ducked in. She just ducked in. So there are seals here. But. Since it's so shallow, there's no orcas. So they were saying right. this lagoon is like a seal's paradise. Plenty of fish. All the food and none of the threat. None of the threat. Other fun fact, this is where uh, James Bond movie was filmed. I did not know that, but I think Die Another Day. I'm gonna fact check that. I think it's Die Another Day. Okay, we have not eaten since breakfast. Which and we've was only a had bagel. a bagel. And that was at like 9 a.m. So. That is one of the downsides with 24 hour daylight is that you kind of just forget to eat or like you've kind of meal meal times pass you by with how busy we are, which is not good. I do not condone that. Do you know what I'm doing? It's struggling. <laughs> I'm like holding it up. It's getting to shake. lower and lower. It's getting lower and lower. We'll be down here like, and so the next thing we're doing. <laughs> Night number two is in the books. It is really windy here. Like it was moving our van back and forth throughout the night, but this campsite has a Viking village, which I think we're gonna go check out. After that, we'll head north. I couldn't tell if this was an actual Viking village that's just been preserved or a set. <laughs> the Viking ship might be a dead giveaway though. I don't think Viking ships had helms quite like this though. Either way, it was kind of cool to check out. Just turning. <laughs> Just turning. <laughs> Whipping donuts in the <laughs> Viking ship. Turns out the village is fake, but it is a replica of an authentic Viking village that was created as a movie set for Universal Studios. However, they scrapped the filming location and it has since been kind of like a tourist spot. But Netflix did film scenes from the Witcher Blood Origin here. This is making me want to go watch Vikings. It's kind of like Game of Thrones, but with Vikings and uh, a lot more carnage. More carnage than more Game carnage. of Thrones? Yeah. It's bloody. You ever seen Spartacus? Yeah. It's like that. Gerard show. Butler. No. Our journey has led us eastward and we venture into this little town called Dupavor. The town sits peacefully between massive mountain ranges and a tranquil bay, and home to a little gem of a restaurant that was quite the surprise. Our food order was simple, a cheeseburger and some of the best fish and chips we've ever eaten. That's a good fish. That's, a, that's really good. 
Mm, that like rivals Washington's fish and chips. The crust isn't too thick, but it's also like this nice texture. Fish is fresh and doesn't taste like stagnant seawater. <laughs> Sometimes fish and chips does. Bomb. And for my Marylanders out there, Ooh. you'd love the chips here too. Kind of tastes like Obey. Oh shit. Mm. In total, our food cost 9,230 krona. And afterwards, we walked around the town for a little bit, which didn't take too long. Nat Geo is in this town. We saw a uh, Nat Geo expedition ship that was parked here in the harbor. Maybe they're here for the puffins. I've always wanted to be a videographer for Nat Geo, so maybe I should go over there and be like, hey, do you guys need an extra videographer for your expedition? One of the super cool things about Iceland is that there's a ton of hikes and like strenuous hikes you can do if you want to see views, but there's also a ton of views just like this waterfall that are literally right off the parking lot that you hardly have to walk to. And we're the only ones here. We found a little hike on this waterfall. It's a very interesting game. I thought it was like an old toilet. The reason I thought it was a bathroom because the sign says don't shit on the ground which I'm guessing people do. Careful, huh? Huh? So careful. It looks way more like shallow from up here because of the water splashes up so high. But when you're looking at it from the front, it looks super tall. That's probably the first like litmus test for you to enter is figure out how to get around the gate. <laughs> Definitely it deters people from going because the people behind us looked really hard and they were like, uh, I don't know. It says you can go, just don't, no no paper. If you're like us who like, like to pretend they're outdoorsy and a less than one kilometer hike with some rocks and elevation like does it for you, that mm -hmm. was perfect. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I took off my jacket and it was wet inside because I am sweating apparently, I didn't even notice. Look at Tony's shirt. <laughs> Do you think you're sweaty? You didn't sweat at all? I mean, a little bit. Should me see your front? No, I'm not wet. Show me your back? <laughs> nah, it's real dry. <laughs> no. How much was it? $66.25. Better $20 than the first time. cheaper, yeah. yeah. We finally made it north and I almost wasn't sure if we were heading in the right direction because the road ended and we had to drive off road for the next few miles. Luckily our van could handle it. But here we are at Fjallikoff Flakafi. We made it to our campsite at 12.30 in the morning and it is so light outside. We got here after registration. Sorry, Ooh. my our light source. <laughs> we got here after registration was closed. So we just parked with all the vans and I think we'll wake up early in the morning to pay because I would rather that than them like awkwardly knocking yeah, on the van like, yeah. door. <laughs> I have heard that people have come late like we have and then paid in the morning so hopefully that works out for us too and they're not knocking on the door well six. our last campsite had a sign they're like if you get here late just come in the morning yeah hopefully this is fine all right good night we've only scratched the surface on what this amazing country has to offer and in part two we're heading north to explore even more breathtaking sites and maybe we'll finally find these puffins that have been eluding us could get used to this 
not gonna lie. But if you're dreaming of an Icelandic road trip, don't let the prices scare you off. Plan wisely, use tools like Fairdrop to save on flights, and get ready for an adventure you'll never forget. We're probably gonna hang out here for a little bit, but the cool thing about Iceland, <laughs> cool thing. Delicious. <laughs> <laughs>